Hi everyone. So guess what? I've been working on an opening. How's this? Hello everyone and welcome. I am April and this is Tea Cozy Gaming, my little corner of the internet where we all get cozy, get a warm cup of something to drink, bonus points if it's tea, and we get our game on. That was it. I rehearsed that a little bit. Is it cheesy? It's kind of cheesy, right? I don't know. I don't know if an opening is a good idea or a bad idea. I don't know if it's for me. Like, I kind of like it, but I also kind of hate it. Maybe it just needs to be reworked a little bit. Uh, I don't I don't know. I don't know. Let me know. What do you think? What do you, Opening? Opening line? Liner thing? Um, intro? Introduction? Yes? Yay or nay? In the comments. Yay or nay? Just... Just say yay or nay. Let me know. Um, anyway, Beacon Pines. This is the game that we're playing. And uh, we were just about to start chapter four after quite quite an eventful last part. So Nun Creed. Nun Creep. He, he is a villain. He's a villain and I totally saw that coming. Uh, we are in a timeline now too where Rolo and Beck are, they're both safe. They are both safe and sound, which is good. We got away from Guy in the hazmat suit, who I'm pretty sure is non Creed. Because um, he is just the the ultimate villain, that guy. Um, but anyway, we met up with Beck. Um, and she pretended like we had become friends so that her so that her moms would be like relieved that she found a friend. Um, and we were just about to go have dinner with them. So I'm actually really excited because this family is adorable. And um, I'm excited. I'm, I mean, I'm hungry. I'm ready to eat. So Ilona let's Ludwell do it. was worried about change. A gardener at heart. She understood the necessity of change. Relied on it, even. But there was a difference between the controlled world of her plants and this cluttered cottage in a strange town. Almost done. Nellie was a blur of activity, digging through boxes. Sorry, love. Couldn't find the dishes. We'll have to make do with paper plates. Dinner went by without much conversation. As she watched Beck and Luca finish up their pizza, Ilona let herself relax into the chair. The things she cared about were still here. Nellie finally had the job of her dreams. Beck was beginning to take root. Ilona's task was simply to tend to them. She could do that. So, Luca, tell us a bit about yourself. Where do you live? Oh, I live with my grandma. Over on the other side of the river. Your grandma? Where are your parents at? Beck Manners. It's all right. My dad passed away in an accident at the fertilizer plant six years back. Oh dear. My mom's been missing for a few months now. Like, missing, missing? Luca's eyes were fixed to his plate, pushing a chunk of pineapple around with his finger. Nellie was the one who eventually broke the silence. Luca, how did you like the pizza? Oh, it was good. Very good. Normally, we'd have put more effort into dinner. Ilona nervously gestured toward the boxes. Hmm. We aren't fully settled in, and Beck had mentioned that it's your favorite. I'm sorry, are we just skipping the part where he said his mom was missing? Beck! I'm sorry, Luca. This move has us all a little tired. Luca wiped his face with his sleeve. Hmm. The tears are back. No, it's fine. So Beck said that you moved here for work? Beck gave Luca a swift kick under the table. <laughs> Ow! I mean, what brought you to Beacon Pines? Oh, you were right the first time. We're here for work. Nellie won't tell you this, but she's a brilliant chemist. I don't know about brilliant, but I do love it. She's brilliant. Perennial Harvest just made her the newest lead researcher of deep engineering. 
She makes it sound more impressive than it is. I'm just happy that I get to make a difference in the world. Perennial harvest is at the forefront of evolving agriculture. And is something more useful than sprinkling water and excrement on the ground. Luca glanced over to back. She seemed to be holding her breath. What Nelly means, Luca, is that there are different ways to grow plants. Yes, some people talk to their plants and hope for the best. And some people happily leave their job to allow a loved one to pursue their dream. Oh boy. You swore you didn't! She slammed her fist into the table. Ooh. Perhaps harder than she intended. Hey, Luca! How about some dessert? I actually have to meet my friend Rolo soon. Luca glanced outside to gauge the time. The sky was darker than he expected, filled with ominous clouds. Looks like there's a storm brewing. I should get going. Oh, I didn't think there was any rain in the almanac. Yeah, almanacs aren't that useful around here. Luca wiped his mouth one last time with his napkin and started to get up. Thank you all for the pizza. It was really good. See you at the festival, Vec. <laughs> Wait up! I'll walk you home. Surprised, Luca turned around. He knew Rolo could be prickly around new people. But Beck seemed cool. Rolo would warm up to her eventually. Probably. Luca began to respond, but the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to break. That would mean rain, probably. Let's do rumble. That's the first one to respond. Ooh. But the sky answered for him as the clouds above began to rumble with ominous thunder. I actually really love the sound of thunder. I found it find it very relaxing. You sure we can make it home before the storm kicks off? Luca surveyed the roiling clouds. I'd say the odds are good. Maybe you should stay here and I'll just make a break for it. At that moment, the heavens opened up, unleashing torrential rain. Mm. Care to recalculate those odds? Hurry inside, you two, before you catch cold. Luca, Nelly will keep trying to reach your gran on the phone. In the meantime, you two hold tight. Sorry, not much to do up here. Most of my stuff is still in the boxes. Mind if I poke around? Be my guest. Luca squinted into the eye hole of the microscope. This looks wild. What is it? Gum. Gum? Luca adjusted the slide with his fingers to get a better look. I'm tracking the structural integrity of gum with increasing amounts of chewing. Chewed that one for 47 days. Luca wiped his hand off on his sweater and gave a nervous laugh. <laughs> Ew. It's weird, I know. Beck looked down, timidly tapping the ladder with her feet. You think it's weird, don't you? A little. But weird can be cool. It's quirky. Oh, wow. Rolo and I have a radio just like this at the treehouse. Probably not exactly like this one. My mom and I tore the whole thing down to the bolts. Fitted it with some state-of-the-art vacuum cute tubes. She seems pretty awesome. She gets carried away sometimes. I think she feels guilty for working too much. So when she does have time for me, 
She showers me with high-tech overcompensation. Luca flicked at one of the toggles. I bet you can get all sorts of stations on this. Not out here in the boonies. You wouldn't believe the stuff I could pick up back in the city. But around here, it's all farm reports and static. Nah, shucks. Luca bent down to examine the bouquet of wilting flowers. Judging by the odor, they were well past their prime. Hmm. Pungent. He flipped open the attached card. Happy trails from Coach Walker and all the Fairview Condors. Boy, you weren't kidding about poking around, huh? Oh, sorry. Was this from your old school? The most recent one, yeah. Some schools gave me going away cards. Some did flowers. When they're really trying to feel good about themselves, they do both. So you've moved a lot. Yeah, that's a thing with having a brilliant parent. There's always a better job somewhere else. These flowers would last longer if you put them in some water. That's the sort of thing I would do if I cared. Well, you cared enough to keep them, is all. Luca, can I ask you something? Of course. <laughs> Dang, didn't that hurt? Nah, she's a cat. She lands on her feet. I'll be honest. That hurt more than I expected. <laughs> well, at least you look cool doing it. Beck took a moment to watch the rivulets of water running down the window. Do you ever feel alone? Like, even when people are around? Well, Rolo can be pretty absent-minded sometimes. I'm serious. Does it ever feel like your family doesn't care what you want? Um, it didn't used to feel that way. I know Gran loves me, but... Sometimes when she looks at me, it's like she's looking at... A problem? Luca took a deep breath, exhaling slowly. I know the feeling. How do you deal with that? I guess I haven't yet. But one thing my dad told me when I was little. Don't hold a grudge, especially against yourself. If you try to hold it all in, you're going to pop. So then, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Dad never got to that part. Something I figured out on my own, though. You gotta do something. Anything. Here. What are you doing? I don't know. Something. We're gonna register our complaints with the storm. Listen here, you miserable universe. Stop jerking me around. I just want things to go back to the way they were. Everyone tells me it's going to be alright. That things are going to change. Let out a feral scream that echoed into the night. Ooh. Every time something changes, everything gets worse. Screw this town. Whoa. Let me try. Moving sucks! I hate it! I hate that I hate it! Why can't I just deal with it and be happy for my mom? Why can't we just stay somewhere? Brah! I just want to be a normal kid. Beck brushed off her shirt and straightened up. There. Wow, I actually feel a little better. As abruptly as it began, the storm abated. Hmm. Thanks. I needed that. Me too. I should head out before the rain starts up again. Sure, I'll walk you out. See you in Rolo at the festival? Sounds good. Luca. Don't let the universe jerk you around. Beck gave Luca a light thump on the arm before heading in. 
Chapter 5 hmm. The air was heavy with a hard rain's residue. The smell of wet things. Despite his dreary surroundings, Luca felt at peace. He'd never shared those details about his dad with anyone. Hmm. Not even Rolo. But it's not like this changed anything. Rolo was still his best friend. Adding Beck to the group would help balance things out. Everything's better in threes. Mm -hmm. This is what Luca told himself as he headed to the treehouse. Catch up with Rolo at the treehouse. Oh, goodness. Hi, <laughs> Don. What you doing out here? Hey, Don. Tracking down a lead? You bet. I heard a juicy new rumor. Turns out, when Sharper Valentine died, he left behind a peculiar last will and testament. Peculiar how? He didn't just give his kids an inheritance. There were conditions. Like what? The document stipulated that Eris had to take on a child as her ward. A kid our age, who just showed up to town one night with a lawyer. Solomon? Bingo. So Eris was forced to take care of him. Yep, or she would have lost everything. Why would Sharper care so much about some random kid? Rumor has it, old Sharper sowed some wild oats. That explains the way Eris treats him. Poor Solomon. How'd you find all this out? A good reporter never reveals her source, Luca. Really, poor Solomon. So Eris doesn't love- yeah. Oh man. I'd better not dilly dally. Gotta get to the treehouse. Just looking at these, they look like they're glowing. <laughs> there is weird fertilizer about. Alright. creepy at night, honestly. You're still here? He met his old friend's eyes and was greeted with nothing but ice-cold anger. Heavens! This is no time for fractured friendships. Oh no. That doesn't bode well for me and Rolo. Excuse me, what are you doing? Just looking up for the night, sir. Oh, wonderful. I can only assume this means all festival preparations have been completed ahead of schedule. Um, not exactly, sir. The storm set us back a bit, and it's getting late, so we all decided to... You all decided. Yes, sir. I was unaware that your job involved deciding things. We are all here at Perennial Harvest because we believe in creating a better future, yes? Yes, sir. Very much, sir. Do you want to be the one to tell this town that we failed them? No. That we gave up because it was a little rainstorm and we all got sleepy? Of course not, sir. Good. Then it's decided. Yes, sir. We'll work till the task is done. See that you do. Our harvest awaits. Gosh, Kerr is... I don't, I don't like him either. I mean, obviously. He's like... Obvious bad guy. I just wanted to see if there's anything different at night to explore. Probably not, but... You never do know. Is this the same... Same stuff? Worst museum ever. Just plays the same, the one movie over and over. Huh? It's locked, okay.
Rolo, are you still up there? Hmm? I'm sorry, Rolo isn't accepting visitors at the moment. Come back never. Luca had only ever heard him speak in this stiff yet gentle tone a few times. And it always meant one thing. You're upset. Oh, what makes you say that? Maybe because my best friend abandoned me for no reason? I didn't abandon you. I'm just a little late. Rolo scoffed. The rain held me up. Liar! You weren't even home. What? The storm got bad, and I got worried. So I went looking for you. Imagine my surprise when I made it to your house, and you weren't there. I hadn't made it back yet. I'm not a fool, Luca. It doesn't take all day to deliver some jam. No, I... That storm rolled in out of nowhere. And I got stuck after dinner at Beck's ha Luca stumbled on his words, knowing he'd said too much. Beck? Dinner? What the heck is a Beck? She's a new kid in town. She's actually kind of cool. You'd like her. She needed help convincing her parents that she'd made new friends. New friends? I spent all day waiting for you. And you were off making new friends? It's not like that, Rolo. You know, while I was waiting, I made some upgrades to mission control. It was gonna be a surprise. But you took so long, the storm knocked it all down. Just like you knocked down our friendship. What does that even mean? Luca became instinctively angry in response. Both boys were now shouting across the distance. Oh, don't fight. It means you're a bad friend. You don't care about me. Of course I care, you ass. I knew I'd get in trouble waiting so late for you. But I kept my word. Because that's what friends do. Oh, wow. What a noble sacrifice you made. Easy for you to say. Your brand doesn't even care. You can stay out as long as you want. And you wouldn't even get in trouble. Seriously? You're acting like I chose this? If that's what you think, then maybe you're the bad friend. Rolo's tone changed to a calm, yet more intense anger. Maybe pause right. Storms bring more than water. This one brought out the real Luca. Stop quoting your pause nonsense like it means anything. Yeah, well, at least my paw is still around. Oh, Rolo. No. The words hung in the cold night air. Rolo's stomach dropped, knowing he'd crossed a line. But it was too late. Luca, I... Good night, Rolo. Dang it. Oh, I don't like seeing them fight. That... No. You two love each other. It's just a misunderstanding. Oh, but that's how friendship is when you're that age. I had a similar situation happen to me. Where I was waiting. A friend and I went to the beach or pond, really. And she wanted to go check on a friend that lived in the neighborhood. And she said she'd be back in a few minutes. And I waited there by myself for like an hour or maybe two hours and then eventually I just went home and I was like she's a shitty friend and she just ended up you know she was having a you know got it having a good time at her friend's house it wasn't anything personal she didn't mean to be a horrible friend I mean we were fine it, it was just when you're that age you, you just don't think about consequences to things like that And it's so easy to feel like you've been betrayed. Luca dug through his old stuff, not even sure what he was looking for. Ooh! Soccer ball, can I kick it? Yes! Rolo, what a jerk. Call me a bad friend. Ooh, 
I'm Rolo. Look at me and my amazing family. Duh. I'm mad. I'm angry. Duh. Okay, I think... <laughs> I think that's all the dialogue with the soccer ball. It is fun, though. Oh. I guess I'm just never supposed to make new friends. Weep. Hmm. Luca? Gran cooed gently from the hallway. You slept straight through breakfast. Luca, are you alright? I'm fine. Just don't feel like getting up yet. Okay, I'll leave this oatmeal by the door. I've got to run and take care of some things. Okay. I'll be back later to check in. Sure. Luca just wanted to be alone. He waited to hear the sound of the front door closing. <laughs> Immediately sits up. I bet Rolo's still gonna go to the festival. Hmm. He's gonna be miserable. Yeah, he's gonna be miserable without me. Hmm. Hmm. Get dozed cool. off again. Luca? I see you didn't eat your oatmeal. Wasn't hungry. Well, just in case you get hungry, I'll leave a sandwich here too. Thanks. Rolo came by. What did he say? He wanted to talk to you. What did you say? I told him you weren't feeling well. Good. So your plan is to just sit in your room all day? Pretty much. Well, I need to pop away for a minute. If you decide to end your pity party and go outside, I think it'd do you some good. Noted. Lucas still couldn't bring himself to go out. Besides, if he ran into Rolo, he'd have to actually confront the situation. Now I'm just gonna angrily kick this ball some more. There's never anything interesting at the festival anyway. Why is there like a soccer ball floating over the bed? What does that mean? If Rolo thinks I'm still going to the festival with him, he can shove it. Ah, there we go. <laughs> the Adventures of Hank Atomic. <laughs> the complete first volume. Luca carefully opened the cover and began to read. Rolo had received it for his birthday. A special hardcover edition with behind-the-scenes commentary and bonus art. Ooh. Rolo cherished it but asked that Luca keep it at his house. Luca wasn't sure if it was because Rolo didn't trust himself with it, didn't trust his sister around it, or just wanted an excuse to come hang out at Luca's more often. Hmm. Whatever the reason, Luca didn't mind. Hmm. But it had stayed right there where Rolo had stashed it ever since. Now, at the foot of his bed, Luca lost himself in the pages. He'd read it all before, but at this moment, it somehow felt sentimental. He was well into issue number five when he heard soft footsteps from the hallway. Luca? Another little friend came to see you. A girl named Beck... Forgot how to pronounce her name. Modewell? Modewell? A girl named Beck Modewell. She said you met yesterday? What did she say? Is she here? She was just dropping by. I told her you weren't taking visitors today. Oh. She seems nice. Yeah. You had a fight with Rolo, didn't you? Can I come in? 
maybe later. All right then. I'll leave dinner on the kitchen table in case you want a bite before bedtime. Without realizing it, Luca had pouted away the entire afternoon. He once again felt the weight of it all and allowed his weary eyes to close. Hmm. Luca stood in a vast black expanse. Oh no, this is another nightmare. He looked up at his father standing beside him. Walt was working a straw at the bottom of a fountain glass, trying to collect the last bits of milkshake. Dad, where are we? Taking a final loud gurgling sip, his father peered up from the glass. He jangled the straw playfully with a warm smile, then lifted the empty glass as if to point into the darkness. The source. Luca's eyes followed his father's gesture. In an instant, he was sitting in front of a blazing campfire. Across from him sat a large figure in a yellow hazmat suit. Ugh. The figure's voice was a scratchy echo. Well, if it isn't the man of the hour, make yourself comfortable. Luca held his shivering hands over the flame to warm himself. It doesn't work that way here. Their yellow gloved hand pointed to the base of the flame. It's a cold flame, see? Luke appeared at the base of the fire. It wasn't wood that was burning. It was Beacon Pines itself. Tiny buildings, freezing and crumbling as they were consumed by flame. Luca could see small shadows moving in the burning city. People. Luca leapt to his feet. We've got to help them! The figure gave a dismissive wave of their hand. Why waste energy helping people who can't even help themselves? The figure bent down to examine the panicked crowd as they desperately tried to stop the flames. They only care about what's right in front of them. Not like us. Luca's voice was a trembling whisper. Us? The figure slowly stood up, grabbing its helmet with both hands. With a jolt and a twist, the suit emitted a gasp. A cloud of torpid mist escaped, slowly revealing the face within. Luca's own face looked back at him. Mm. Older, worn, distant. The sensation was oddly familiar, as if he'd caught his own reflection by surprise in the mirror. The doppelganger smiled. I tried to help once. He gestured towards his face. And all it got me was this. Lucas staggered back. You aren't me. Luca felt a hand catch his shoulder. His father was there again, beside him. Every choice sets us on a path. This is the end of one of your paths, son. Luca watched his older self shake its head ruefully, its face twisting into a cruel grin. Welp, Dad. If you wanted him to see this, far be it from me to disappoint. Luca watched in shock as the figure took a confident step forward and plunged into the flames. In a flash of cold light, he was gone. What does all of this mean? Luca felt a reassuring squeeze on his shoulder. Just remember why we choose matters just as much as what we choose. Luca woke up to see a hazy figure at the foot of his bed, silhouetted in the morning sun. Mom? No, dear. It's only Gran. Luca rubbed his eyes. The kind, concerned face of his Gran came into focus. How are you feeling? Fine. Anything you want to talk about? I don't feel like talking. That's just as well. How about you sit there and listen a bit? Whatever you and Rolo fought about doesn't matter. But he... Grand silenced Luca with a gentle pat on the leg. Fights between friends happen. What was said doesn't matter. The important thing is that it's not the last thing you ever say to each other. But he said stuff about Dad. Well, do you think he meant it? No. He was just mad. Mm-hmm. And did you mean any of the things you said to him? No. Good. One must appreciate friends in their best moments. 
and accept them in their worst. Now get your little butt out of bed. The festival's today. You don't want to miss that, do you? I guess not. Seems like a good opportunity to make amends with Rolo, doesn't it? Luca gave a reluctant nod. So buy him a corn dog and apologize. But he's the one that... What did I just say? Buy him a corn dog. That's a good boy. Everything's better with corn dogs. I need to get going now. Got some last minute festival business to take care of. I'll come find you at the fountain a little after lunch. All right. I love you, Luca. Love you too. Luca took a deep breath. Okay. Chapter six. Through thick and thin. My goodness, I, it's like I hate to, I kind of hate to end it here on, on sort of a sad, sad note, but um, it is that time. It is time to end the video. Wow. I, I kind of, I, I don't, it takes me a little bit of time to process things. So I'm reading things out loud and my brain isn't fully like caught up with what I'm reading or fully processing everything. So when I'm done playing here and when I, you know, sign off on the video and everything, that's probably when it's gonna, I'm gonna start thinking more and theorizing more about what his dreams mean. Like these dreams with his father, when he sees himself as a grown man, just destroying the town, what does it mean? I mean, is it just kind of his fear of of being stuck there and things not changing? And so in his dreams, he destroys it? I, I don't know. Um, but I, I also hate seeing Luca and Rolo fight. I don't like that. I don't like I don't like it. Uh, they're besties. They can't be fighting like that. Um, but I hope in chapter six, they are able to patch things up. And uh, hopefully it's a little bit cheerier the next time we are here. Um, yeah, let me know what you think of Luca's dreams and what you think maybe they mean. And also Luca's mom, like we still don't really know too much about what might have happened to her. So if there's any like kind of obvious theory of, of to where she might be, let me know that in the comments. But no spoilers. If you've played this game, no spoilers. Please don't spoil anything. Like, I don't want spoilers. Um, but yeah, if you like this video, uh, do hit the like button so that I know. And subscribe if you would like to see more of me and my content. I promise there will be more. And I will see you all soon. Bye.